Good morning, and welcome to the Cannon County Chamber Connection. And of course, as always, this is brought to you by DTC um, Channel 3. And we do appreciate all they do for Cannon County and surrounding counties throughout the year. Uh, they're a good partner for us. Um, we had a very eventful July uh, with lots of events, all of which were well attended. Now that's the report I've got, and that's probably from somebody that didn't go. But anyway, <laughs> they, everybody said they had good turnouts for that, and we're proud of that. Our fireworks show was great. The uh, Lions Club Walking Horse Show, I think it had a record-breaking crowd uh, that came to it. So, you know, everything's well. Uh, we want you to stay tuned for more events that will be coming up. And of course, August is after July. I don't know how you compete with July. Mm -hmm. August is a little calmer, maybe because of the heat but uh, not quite as many events as July has. But then here comes September, and then the weather's supposed to cool down, and then you're gonna have a lot more things. I am Carolyn Motley, in case you don't already know, and I am with the Chamber of Commerce, and I have a co-host, it's Keith Reddy. And Keith is with the Cannon Courier now, and he's also the DJ for our cruise in and our car show. Plus, I'm sure you DJ a lot of other things. I got all kinds of other things that I do too, yes. Well, we don't have time for you to listen. <laughs> no, anymore. no, we don't. The resume's <laughs> full. <laughs> okay, well, just as long as we keep you working, that's all that matters. Yeah, I, I like money. I do yeah, have some goes. guests today, and uh, one of them on this side is Rael Masters, and Rael has a unique organization. It's called Hoofbeats Healing Hearts, and it is a therapy organization. How are you today, Rhea? Doing pretty well, thank you. You want to tell us about what's going on with you anyway? Sure. Um, hello, I'm Rael Masters. Uh, I'm a faith-based equine-assisted philosophy facilitator um, and founder of Hoofbeats Healing Hearts. Our program uses a faith-based interaction with horses um, to promote healing from trauma. Um, we do have an open house coming up if you'd like to know more about what we can offer, what we do. Um, that's going to be Saturday, August 24th from 9 a.m. to noon. And um, we'll have free food. Woohoo! Um, we will answer <laughs> frequently. Prizes. Yes, they we have door come. prizes and free food. There you go. That's a good reason to come on out. Um, we'll answer frequently asked questions about the horses, about what exactly we do and um, we'll sh try to show you what a session looks like. And where are you located at? We are located at 90 Prater Road in Woodbury, Tennessee. Um, if you go south on Highway 53 outside of town, it's about a 10 minute drive and we're just off of the main road. Okay. And so how have you, I know you've been doing this now for what, about a year and a half? Um, I was trained back in 2018, um, okay. and I've, I've been, we've, we've been in place since then. We just have officially opened our doors this summer. So. Now, what ages do you uh, cater to? Um, I can do anywhere from ages eight and up. Okay, no one less than eight. No one less than eight, because that's what my insurance covers. Right, mm -hmm. so. right. And, and when you talk about trauma, what type of trauma are we talking about here with? That can be anything. Actually, what inspired this was um, my husband is a veteran um, with PTSD. Right. So that's where this whole thing started. I have been trained to do uh, work with veterans with PTSD, which also includes anxiety, depression, which are parts of that. And um, also survivors of like the sex trade, that kind of thing. We've, okay. I've been trained specifically for those types of situations. However, um, depression, anxiety, stress, all of that thing can just, that's kind of across the board. Anybody that's dealing with anything like that, this is a great place to come work through some of those things. And you do this through the therapy with animals because more and more animals are part of a therapy for a person. Yes. Um, we use horses. Um, horses are 
kind of mirrors to whatever um, people are feeling. It's, it's something that is a very good connection. Um, it's just our How many horses do you have? We currently have three. Only two are in use in the program right now because one is still very young. Um, she's not quite ready there mentally to, to be part of this, but we do use two horses. It does take a certain type yes. of horse, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. <laughs> How long does it take to train a horse to be useful in this um, program actually it's not so much about training as it is about the horse's personality and how right. they interact with people um, so we do we have a very strict process in figuring out which of these horses work well for this because um, not only do they have to have a really good relationship with people but they also have to be able to work with each other really well we can't have horses that can't stand each other <laughs> bite right. and fight yes. <laughs> I got bit by a pony at a rodeo one time. <laughs> what does that say? Oh, yeah. That was the highlight. Be pony. <laughs> that was the highlight of my grandkids' uh, experience at the rodeo. Is I was walking by and they had this little pony tied to the fence. I walk by and I'm trying to keep all the grandkids in line, and he just reaches through there and bites a hunk out of me right on my behind. Well, they laughed about it for weeks. You well, know, that's come a story to, that Danny has never sit, told about. Well, the next night, because uh, the rodeo was two nights, my grandson won that pony. Oh, no. Oh. But luckily, we weren't there. <laughs> Which grandson was this? Josh. Josh. <laughs> he was little. But we weren't there to get that little pony, and I was what, real proud. Where is that pony now? I have no idea, no idea. and I could care less. <laughs> I just hope she don't have it. But I don't usually, think we have it. <laughs> usually ponies are, are not, um, they're not really good for this type of thing, are they? They have a little uh, different personality. It just, it really depends on the individual because we actually use a miniature horse and he's excellent. Oh, he's tiny. I've seen him. Yeah, yeah. So he's, um, he pulls our cart for us and he mm -hmm. does a lot of, he can help with people who are kind of intimidated by a horse's regular size, you know, your standard horse size. So that's why we have a miniature involved as well because that, he's about as big as a Rottweiler. You so. want to be, <laughs> be bigger than a horse than that's the one. Yep, yep. He's the one we use. And I'd well. just like to say, hey, Rael, I haven't seen you for a long time. I know, it's been a while. <laughs> and you and I were in, um, when we very first came to Tennessee, we were in Big River, and Rael is, uh, comes from a fabulous family that I've, I've worked with your, both your parents, and I'm so happy that you're undertaking this endeavor, mm -hmm. and hopefully you're going to make some really good connections and, and make a difference here in Cannon County. I hope so. Are there organizations that you're hooked up with as far as military organizations and stuff to get the word out about your... Um, we are actually involved with the VA in Murfreesboro. Okay. Um, we're working to kind of build a relationship there. They've actually just changed some of their um, laws, I guess, or their rules about uh, the types of therapy that I provide. So um, we're just trying to figure out exactly how we can get connected in a good way with them as far as, you know, being able to um, outsource their right. veterans to come right. to us. How would someone get in touch with you, Rael, um, if they were is, interested in your organization? There is a Facebook page that has all of my contact information on it. Um, there's a phone number, there's an email. You can comment on posts or you can message me um, on that page. And those are the best ways to, to contact me. Okay. And your Facebook page is under Hoofbeats Healing Hearts. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Was well, there anything else you want to tell us about? Well, we've got this? an open house that we. Yes, it is like. an open house on August 24th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. And that is at your home. Yes. You can come out there. You can meet and greet with the horses and hope they don't butt you in the no ring, right? she don't <laughs> have <laughs> she don't have any horses that no, i know i'm just now she don't and they're going to show you exactly what these horses can do and how they can be of use to you and you're not the first organization i've heard of that uses horses mm -hmm. as therapy a lot of people with disabilities uh, that are disabled to use horses. Yes, and, as and a this form of is slightly too. different than that. This right. is not a physical therapy, it's more of an emotional type therapy. So that is something that 
people have kind of got confused. Um, and also, we don't actually do horseback riding lessons. Mm -hmm. um, that's something else that people have mm -hmm. asked me, but I just wanted to get that out there. Um, so like I said, if, if this sounds remotely interesting to you, just come check us out, contact me. How do your, well, you just brought up something now. Um, so the therapy these horses would provide is through the handling of them more yes. than the, the yes. riding, the taking care of them. Mm -hmm. There is, um, again, it's more of a relationship between the client and the horse. Um, we do a lot of stuff on the ground, which means that you're interacting with the horse um, kind of on the horse's level instead of on his back. Um, we do have a couple of things where we might end up on a horse, but it's all, it's kind of like the end of what, you know, after, after several After you've gotten to sessions. know the horse. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of an end of the, um, the sessions, like how many that you would do. So. How, how many is a session? Sessions last anywhere between 35 and 40 minutes. Um, okay. That's really kind of the best, what we've discovered is the best way for people to gather everything from it, process it, and um, not get overwhelmed. So. Okay. When you say, handle, when I say handling the horse, this includes what? Um, you grooming will be, and... um, sometimes it's grooming. It, it really just depends on what kind of session that we're doing, what we're addressing in them. Um, there's sometimes you have to figure out how to move a horse from one place to another. You have to um, just, sometimes it's just observing the horses and how they interact with each other and with you. Uh, like I said, it just really depends on what you're coming and needing to address. It's okay. a case by case thing. So there won't be any rodeo uninvolved? Will no it? rodeoing, no. That might create a whole other set of pieces. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rhea, well, this is unique and different for our area. And like I say, it's not unheard of. It's just that this is not so much for disabilities that are physical, but also some disabilities that you may have mentally, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for coming on, and we hope that this proves good for you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, that's quite all right, dear. Congratulations. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now, the next guest we have is not new to you. <laughs> we no. have uh, Lori Christensen on board with us, and uh, she will explain her costume in just a moment. But she is the owner, or one of the owners, of the Canon Arts Dance Studio, which was one of the big events that we had in uh, the last month, because you did have a grand opening, did you not, Lori? We had a wonderful grand opening. I want to thank you, Carolyn, and the Chamber, and the community for turning out. We, it was very well attended between, and you were there too, and took some fabulous pictures. Yes, we did. Or in the Canon Courier this week, they so are. thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. But it was six years in the making, that grand opening, um, Carolyn, as you know. It was. A lot of hard work went into that. My husband, uh, Greg Christensen, was chief uh, architect and bottle washer on that. So uh, we, we thank everyone. We had, I want to thank the vendors, too, that contributed the door prizes. The whole community really supported us. And we had all of the antique stores gave us something, um, some of the dress stores as well as the dance store in Murfreesboro gave us a lovely gift as well. Tea Cakes Bakery, um, I could They go did on. a beautiful cake, yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah, so we, first of all, I mean, I'm thanking the vendors, but most importantly, I'm thanking the students and parents who've hung with us for six years and were standing behind us. Lori, tell them why it took you six years to open this store. Do you want the real story or well, the I, 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 story? I want a, <laughs> we want the rating story. I uh -huh. want a version <laughs> of it that, not every detail, but I do know that Greg, your husband, and you also, this was a hands-on project, right? This was a hands-on project, and uh, we did it ourselves, basically. We only hired out for sheetrock. Um, a shout-out to Roscoe Brown did the, the air. Um, Russell Davenport did the roof. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else uh, helped us on those things. But all the rest, all the rest we did ourselves. But you had water issues. Oh, gosh, yes. You had a fire next door. Oh, yes. Which affected your building. 
This was biblical. And so, <laughs> <laughs> we had fire and flood and pestilence. Phantom and, and <laughs> yes, the fire uh, burned the two buildings next to us, and we had already, just as we were getting started in 2013, we had to replace the roof and kind of restructure and rethink, and that to this day, that's been an effect, uh, had an effect on our business, including the plumbing that we just had done yes. by the city of Woodbury. Thank you so much. That Shane. came up the week of grand opening. Yes. The sewer decided that it was going to act up. It had been the one thing that maybe hadn't, so it wanted to get in there. <laughs> that's right. And, uh, <laughs> and you did a, a a phenomenal job of water drainage because of the location of the building. There's always been water problems there because the of the lay of out. the land. The city water department, I can't thank you enough, or we couldn't have had little ballerinas and pink tutus and out in the porta potty <laughs> out back. So hmm. imagine that and I cannot thank you enough for really, I feel like it was a whole effort. We had a lot of uh, city employees as well as some of our vendors there at the, um, at the event. It was, it was phenomenal. It was kind of overwhelming, to be honest. So. <laughs> well, I wasn't in a pink tutu, but I didn't want to go out to that outdoor John in the back either. <laughs> we tried so. <laughs> getting her in one, but she kept refusing it. So uh -oh. No, that, that would give a whole new effect to the tutu, so mm -hmm. I'm not, uh, yeah. So we had the we've had we had the fire. Uh, then we had, because of that and some of the water issues next to us in that vacant lot, and just as you said, the way it's situated, the age of the building, we had what we call rising damp, which it was like a almost a losing battle to um, bring this water under and moisture under control, control. which. We did with this company called Reno Dry. It's very space age. I I'm, could go into it, but they they installed a sphere that basically pushes down the water molecules back down into the ground, and that took it a year for it to work. So we've we've had just about everything. So knock on wood. We're but good. you have a state of the art building oh, now. Yes. You have a, a special dance floor. Yes, that's that not floor. too many people uh, dance studios have. That floor is a sprung floor, and I know some people have sprung floors, but this floor is actually certified, and there's only maybe two dance floors that I know of that are certified. I don't know in the country, but I, uh, we had a specialist come down, um, and what that means is that that dancer is going to, there's a, there's a shock absorption rate, and it's going to give that spring. It's going to be beneficial to our dancers in the long run for Prevent those Prevent injuries. It. Yes, and it's awesome. And it's white oak, which goes with our Cannon County yeah. team. So it's so. beautiful. And you have an upstairs where the parents should go to watch their children practice on TV instead of around the dance floor, right? That's right, and we have all of our cameras up and running now. So at the grand opening, we had to, we have four cameras. So parents, I have parents raving about that space, and I didn't understand this was going to be a marketing tool, but one mom yesterday said to me, how many more lessons can my child take so I can come up and read a book and relax <laughs> up here? And watch them on TV. <laughs> and just watch on television. So we have closed circuit uh, television and what that does is remove the parent from the dance floor. We have two waiting rooms and it is such a better atmosphere for yes. the teacher and for the student because they build that relationship without the parent there. <laughs> Holler and get the, on your toes. Right, without the parent in, <laughs> In the same in, room. In the same room. There I thank go. you, yeah. Keith. I was searching. I'll bail for that. you out. That's good. <laughs> thank you. I, because it's just like in a school building. You know, you, the parent doesn't sit with the teacher in the classroom. Right. And and we want the parents to be able to access and see it. And we give time at the end of class, especially for our babies, for those picture opportunities. Yeah. But um, we found already we see the difference. So. Oh well, good. Yeah. Good. And we've started classes already. That's what I was going to yeah. ask you about. Is your fall session that's coming up, or it's already started, I guess? We started this week, but we will be taking registration throughout the month of August. And 
I don't know, it's something about the floor and the environs, but I feel like, it, it, even yesterday when I got to teach, I feel like it's, it just has brought it up a notch. Yeah. Um, the instruction, uh, it's just really exciting. And well, that's why I have my costume on. Well, of course you do. <laughs> and to some of you that don't know what type of floor we're talking about, this is kind of equal to a basketball gym floor. Oh, you see you a go. lot of parquet floors that have the same spring. Because when I stepped on it, I was like, wow, this is like MTSU right here. Here we go. Where's the goals? I need a basketball. Well, uh, I couldn't shoot anymore with my right, but that's okay. <laughs> in but, fact, uh, we have MTSU, um, as the same people that we hung our mirrors to. That's another. They're specially oh, yeah. designed. Those are nice. And that same uh, company put the mirrors in MTSU. So we do have a lot of parallels including, and she just started yesterday, and I'm gonna give a round of applause, an MTSU intern. It's wow. the first one ever. Uh, they've chosen our studio, and I guess we've chosen them. We've developed a relationship whereby they have placed one of their dance majors into our studio as an intern, where she'll be receiving credit, and we've developed a rigorous program for her so we're very, very excited. She got to teach yesterday, and we are so impressed with our Miss Marin, our Marin, Marin, our MTSU uh, in, in, right. intern. It's really exciting. Uh, you know, another thing we didn't mention, and I want to give these guys uh, kind of a shout out. At your grand opening, you had a group of um, musicians. Yes. Bluegrass what did musicians. they play? The flat, well, they're called flat broke. Right. And I felt they were appropriate after my husband. I've spent a lot of money for six years. Uh, you can identify with that, couldn't you? I, and I also identify uh, Mr. Carl Halfacre is one of my really good friends. He is the former manager of Edgar Evans State Park. His son is the current manager of Edgar Evans State Park. And many of you might know that I do a lot of volunteer work with Edgar Evans and I love the park system, and it was, it was really special to have our park family also represented um, at the studio, and it was fun to have them there. Yeah. They were, and, yeah. and they were a good group of guys that came in and um, played during, and it was very nice. And I'm hoping we get them at the Christmas uh, oh, I'm event hoping in November. So so, I'm hoping um, so, too. I think that would be a big draw. They, they add a lot. But going back to our uh, programming that just opened, uh, we've already started our ballet. Uh, we have everything from ballet. We've actually included a level of ballet this year. So we are all up to ballet five. And we have homegrown our students, some from little. So it, it's just so exciting to see them go on point, um, which is a lot of uh, the a big dream of ballerinas is to go on point to make this connection with MTSU where maybe they can go and audition for the dance major. Um, we are a concert-based and a performance-based studio, so we, we, uh, we want to strengthen that. Um, mm -hmm. So our ballet, but we also have tap, jazz. Uh, we had hip-hop last night. It was really, really fun. We have clogging today. And of course, we have all of our babies too, which are really, oh, yeah. really special. They're sweet just to go watch. Yeah. They're so cute. Yeah. <laughs> we, our floor was christened by one the very first week of dance camp. Um, <laughs> it was baptism by, I'm not going to say the word. <laughs> flood. Yeah. Another type of flood right on the white was, oak floor. I was going to ask with everything that you've been through on this floor and in, in making of the studio and stuff, if you're going to choreograph like a dance with all the, you know, due to all the experiences, you know, like the Ooh, fire and the water and don't we, do the other thing where you christen the floor. No, no, no we're, we're, see we, that. we're not going to see that. And I don't but, want to mention yeah. the family notes. <laughs> it, it will be, it will live on in the folklore of the studio. But yeah. very first. One, three years old, bam. So, do you keep a scrapbook? <laughs> I am very bad at keeping scrapbooks. <laughs> uh, I don't have time. Uh, my office manager, Kelly Lescarini, saves a lot of our things. Uh, I have things on computer. We do have, I will say, from moving from the old building to this building, it was 
We had all of our recital pictures up for the most part in the old building. We couldn't do that in the new building. First of all, it was it's hard to hang on the plaster. Right. So what we've decided to do is rotate out so the current or most recent recital pictures are up and we invite people to come down and, and see that. But um, the rest of the pictures, now that you mention it, yes, we've had our dance moms. They've put them in scrapbooks. Good, so that's, that's great. We have them out. You can, I know the community loves to come in and say, oh, I took from Miss California when <laughs> I was five. And so we you, have that. You were mentioning uh, Edgar Evans. Yep. Um, they have an event coming up, the History Hayride, I believe that there, uh, you can start registering for that on September 1st. Yay. Uh, and there are several people from Cannon County that portray roles in that. And last year was my first year to attend that. I had a ball, it was so <laughs> good. And Lori, the part that she plays in that was made for her. <laughs> because she did, and well, all I don't know the what comments that says about me no, killing seven no. husbands. Uh, you're so oh, good. Oh wow! <laughs> I, I'm going. I'm not your husband, but I'm going to sit around on the other side of Carolyn here. We don't have any weapon. Well, the little dog right there. I don't know. You, I don't think you can hurt me with that. We'll be all no, right. it was so. She is so good at it, uh, portraying that woman who, yes, had buried seven Borden. husbands. Yeah. No, it well, was Elizabeth Lizzie Dale. It's the Black Widow, um, oh. and you'll have to to find out more. You'll have you to need to go. The hayride. But yeah. you also have Gerald Melton and Marsha Melton, yep. and Gerald plays. Um, he, I think he distributes the moonshine, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, he's a he's slick, not the moonshiner, he, but he's a slick talker. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it has to do with selling moonshine. Yes, it does. They also have a moonshiner. <laughs> uh, there's just several different. You, you get on this wagon and you go several different places where they have role players that deal with how the park was established and everything. And if you've never went, that would be, this would be an excellent something for you to go on because it is so fun. And they have food at the park before you go. They have hot dogs and lots of things in there, brownies that I couldn't eat, but doesn't matter, they have them. So you might think about that this year. I believe that we have uh, uh, Anna and Fount Bertram as our guests next month, and they'll tell you more about it. But you need to go on that hayride because we were on a wagon with people that weren't even from here that enjoyed it. You know, they didn't really know the history of Edgar Evans or anything else, you know, but they enjoyed that hayride. Well, it brings I heard the, the comments. <laughs> well, they didn't want to get buried out back on my. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say any more, but uh, it's that's the second uh, Saturday in October. Okay. And, but this is a different costume I'm wearing um, for our dance revolution. So we were talking about that, and we feel that our going back to the dance studio that. Um, we have hopefully started, a, it's a new day for us, a revolution is something that completely changes the way people see things, or it's a new idea, it's a disruption, and hopefully a growth, and uh, that's what we, we hope to grow with the community, hence our revolution. Um, so our th recital theme this year is revolution. It can be literal or figurative, but um, come join the revolution. We have great programs. We have revolutionary uh, relationship with MTSU. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot. And of course, the dance floor as you're talking about too. So we have well, a lot to offer. The whole building is an asset to our downtown area. You know, we have a lot of old buildings. Some of them have to be <laughs> redone from the ground up as this one did. And it took them a few years, but they faced Hopefully you won't have to face a fire or flood or anything like that. But uh, anybody that takes the time and money and energy to upgrade our buildings and make our square uh, more conducive to people coming in and enjoying their time there, I'm all for. What? So I take my hat off to you and your husband. <laughs> I'll take your hat off. Too. 
and, and your husband. You have supported us throughout, Carolyn. Really, it's, you know, this community, um, without the community support, we wouldn't be here. I will give you, uh, you can reach us at 615-563-9122 is our studio phone. It's easier to reach me at our uh, email, which is canondance1, that's all you have to remember, canondance1 at gmail.com, and we have a, a lovely website too, and that's canonartsdance.com, and for your convenience, you can register right online. So we've made it easy for you to come through the door, come see us, come visit us. You know, there's kids of all ages that would like to take dance lessons. I know there are out there. Uh, this might be an opportunity. They can't come and watch one, right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just to see? Yeah, absolutely. And you have teenagers as well as? Yeah, we had them last night. We had our hip hop uh, group, which they had a ball, actually. It was really <laughs> fun to see them. We'd love more teenagers. Well, we have teens in ballet and other disciplines as well but if you're just starting as a teen I would recommend maybe the hip-hop it's hard to start ballet at age it 18 is. but uh, we have garage bar that I didn't mention um, Miss Amber Phillips uh, you have what garage I didn't mean this kind of bar garage okay. bar or not okay. drinking at the bar okay it's called bar at the corner but what they mean <laughs> I know Carol <laughs> go ahead <laughs> I wasn't even thinking of that. Well, she now she's got the mental image going. B A R R E, so. and it's an exercise program that we also there they meet go. early. They're a five fifteen, five thirty group a.m. and then we have it two nights a week, and that's a great program for adults. So we, if you want to come use the bar and come exercise, that would be a program for older. Yeah, I knew what the bar was. <laughs> I know. I just wanted to clear that up. You might get more if it was the other kind of bar, but that's okay. Well, or maybe this is an exercise you could get, bar. Maybe you could combine them. You know, while wow. they're dancing at the bar, there's another bar, you know. No, that's a whole I'm not show gonna touch there. that. I don't want somebody to come, you know, yeah, I'm dance not breaking mom might any be laws. Not too happy with you if you did that. That's right. That's right. We're just teasing you, Lori. You'll do a good job and I'm I've gotta say I can't say enough about what they did on that building and i'm proud that it's a dance studio here of this caliber that's here in cannon county we're a small community this is the caliber of dance studio you see in big communities so um and you do take dancers from out of the oh, county yes. don't you we have you? quite a few actually uh a, a lot from mcminnville uh, we also have a satellite program in smithville uh, that Canon Arts Dance runs at the DeKalb Community Center. We're developing mm -hmm. that, and hopefully some of those students, if they want to advance, will come to the studio and dance on the, on the floor. But uh, so yes, we, we're trying to reach out, and we also, my hope is to make this a dance destination whereby, say, for instance, the Tennessee Association of Dance Executive Director with, attended our, our function where we could host those kinds of workshops right uh, or host you know collegiate workshops so that's what we're aiming we're aiming high good <laughs> well you have to do that don't you you aimed high for the building and that's look true. what happened <laughs> that's true that a lot of that is due to my husband <laughs> yes it is he is a perfectionist greg is and i'm not saying that in a bad kind of way there were times when i think Lori would have said just do it Oh, you know, I, I might have said that. <laughs> <laughs> Couple times. I'm sure huh? she did, <laughs> but it all turned out well because it's great. Uh, if you haven't visited, if you come to Woodbury, and they're open, be sure and stop in. It's worth seeing. So right across from the courthouse, too. That is mm -hmm. right on Main Street. Okay, my next uh, guest is also not a stranger to you. She hasn't been on in a while because we've been moving around for the last several, well, several shows because of um, conservatory, conservatory at the Art Center and everything. So uh, yeah, we, we kind of move around. But I have Lindsay Duggan with us and Lindsay's going to tell us everything Art Center. All things Art Center. We have had such a busy summer here at the Art Center. 
You uh, did. We had three sessions of our uh, senior, junior and senior conservatory, <coughs> um, which is our summer camp that we do for kids every year. It's a two-week program, and at the end of the two weeks, the kids put on a, pr a performance for their friends and family. Um, so we have had just hordes of kids here this summer, um, all learning about the stage and all the life lessons that go along with that. Um, so that's something you're interested in. Keep us in mind for next summer because we do it every year. Um, but other than that, um, our, the rest of our 2019 season, so it is beginning school. We are moving into the fall, but the Art Center is holding on to summer a little bit longer, and we're doing Mamma Mia, the musical. Um, it's based on all of the music of ABBA. So if you're a 70s ABBA fan, this is the show for you. Uh, it runs August 16th through the 31st. Um, and that's three weekends. Uh, you can definitely call the Art Center for tickets. I would book ahead of time. This show is gonna sell out. So um, call the Art Center or visit our website, which is artscenterofcc.com. That's arts with an S, artscenterofcc.com. After Mamma Mia, we move into September. Um, we are doing Clue, the musical. So think the board game, Clue, but as a musical. Um, it is really funny. It's a fantastic script. It is different every time you see it. So you get to play the show kind of like you play the board game, which is really neat. Oh, but the okay. butler doesn't always do it in the end, right? No, it's, you know, you know, Colonel Mustard in the ballroom <laughs> with the wrench, you know, yeah. you never know what's going to happen. Um, and like I said, the, the murderer and the weapon and the room and all of that change with every show. So uh, you'll have to come back and see it multiple times. That's what I was fixing to say, endings. you know. Yeah. Um, see, it's who really did what? And then at the end, you're going to take a poll on which ending was the best, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll, we'll have to do that. Um, but it's going to be so much fun. And then, of course, um, we're ending our 2019 season with A Christmas Story, the musical, which is just a classic. It plays every Christmas. Think pink bunny suit and the leg lamp. Leg lamp. All of that, you know, the tongue stuck to the flagpole, all of it happens to music uh, here at the Arts Center. And that runs November 8th through the 23rd. Um, so it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a big musical cast. I get to direct that one. I'm very excited. Oh, good. So I'm directing a Christmas story. We actually have auditions coming up for that at the end well, of this month. Well, you also perform in Mamma Mia. I do you know? perform in Mamma Mia, yes. Um, it, that the music we're in rehearsals so I'm here all day doing my things here and then I stay at night and do some rehearsals too so I'm um, living here these days but it's so fun uh, the music is fantastic Dancing Queen uh, Waterloo all those fun songs that you know we've got them all and it's it's upbeat and just a, a great show so yeah that sounds like fun yes yeah, so that's our the rest of our 2019 season we're coming out with our brand new 2020 season we're going to announce it during the run of mama mia so stay tuned um, because we've got some really fantastic shows lined up for 2020 that i'm not allowed to say yet um, so just a, a few more weeks and we can uh, announce our 2020 season which is actually our 30th anniversary season um, so that's going to be special for us. That's too. amazing. Oh, yes, of course. And thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Uh, we do, on top of plays and musicals uh, and summer camps and everything else, we have a full concert series. Um, so the next one coming up is October 12th and 13th. That is uh, Country Music Storytellers. Um, and that's the title of the concert. But the show stars Jason Petty. And if you've ever seen him perform, he does a fantastic job. He usually does a Hank Williams no. tribute kind of thing. So this is going to include more than just one artist, um, but he's going to kind of do a showcase of several different old country classics. Um, so that is October 12th and the 13th um, the, for uh, country music storytellers. Then if you are a fan of Shake, Rattle, and Roll, which happened uh, back in June, it's a fantastic group of guys that we have that kind of portray uh, Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, uh, Carl Perkins. So if those are, if that's the era of music that you like, you need to get tickets for this show and it will sell out so fast, um, just like the one in June did. December the 20th through the 22nd, we're doing Jingle Rattle and Roll. 
Um, so it's their version of the Christmas concert. Um, so they're doing the old classic music like you like, and then they're throwing in a couple of Christmas shows, or Christmas songs there in, in the program. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So those are our It's one concerts. of my favorites, it was. They're so talented um, and put on a really great show. So that's December 20th through the 22nd. Um, the next biggest event we have at the Art Center, because there's always something going on, uh, is the White Oak Craft Fair. That is September the 14th and 15th. If you've never been before, it is tense. I think we have almost 80 different artists that come from all over. They set up tents in our fields back behind our pavilion and they sell their crafts, their artwork and their crafts. And there are some fantastic pieces. There's woodworkers, glass workers, uh, potters, jewelry. jewelry, lots of jewelry. That's one of my favorites. Uh, basket weavers, I mean, you name it, they're here. And you get to just really experience some, some cool art. So if you have a chance, September 14th and 15th, uh, come out and see the White Oak Craft Fair. We even have some really good food vendors lined up this year. I'm excited for well, that. <laughs> and, and I will say, this is a free event, but there is a $3 parking. Yes. And mm -hmm. we're, because you want help parking for this. <laughs> because yes. parking is at a premium for this. That's true. Um, who will be doing the parking this year? Do I don't you know? think we have, um, in the past we've had the high school track team mm -hmm. that's done it for us. I don't know if we've confirmed that this year or not, okay. but I think they're definitely on our list. So, okay. um, But all the proceeds will go to the people that help us out with the parking. So it's not right. something that we will keep. Um, and we do need that help. It's, it's a very well attended event. It is. Um, so we want to make sure that everybody gets the parking that is convenient for them. What time does the craft fair start? Uh, it usually yeah. starts about 9 or 10 in the morning. Um, and I don't have the specific times on that just yet. Yeah, okay. But um, I, can, I can definitely get that for you guys. Or you can call to the Art Center if you want to know some more. If you have art even uh, that you'd like to see in the showcase at some point. Uh, definitely give us a call and we can put you in touch with the right person. It's 9 to 5 on Saturday and 10 to 4 on Sunday. Well, see, she had, she had more information. <laughs> All I had to do was ask her, her yeah. <laughs> 9 to 5 and then what, what was can the... I say? Sun? 10 to 4, 10 to 4 on, Sunday. on Sunday. Okay. So, yeah. And All things Art big. Center. Yes, so much going on here. Um, if you want to know about anything that's coming up soon, please give us a call or head to our website. You can usually find all of the information you need there. And then they're open daily, uh, Tuesday through Saturday. Saturday. Mm -hmm. And you can come in because they have a lot of art that's on display. Yes. And that changes out and it is for sale. So, and of course the, the craft show, the craft shop is always open. Absolutely. And um, you can come in and get birthday gifts. And you, you know, for that person that has everything, well, you'll come in here and find something they don't have. I guarantee it, yes. you will. The, the craft store is all one of a kind, <coughs> handmade art from local artists. So right. you'll always it's find something not, unique. Nothing from China, nothing <laughs> from Taiwan. You're There's right. not going to be anything in there like that. Okay, well, have you covered everything, Lindsay? I think you have. I think I can pretty close. Um, <laughs> we have a long list of stuff, and like I said, there's always something going on here. So, And so you here. can always call or stop by if you want to. Uh, a lot of these uh, shows and everything, you kind of need to plan ahead because a lot of them will sell out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've had people say, well, I've tried to go to this and that, but they were all sold out. Well call and see what's happening and reserve your ticket for that so that's how that works yeah thank you for being on of course Lindsay. thanks for having me back it's oh, been a while <laughs> it has been and i thought i need Lindsay because she's yeah. good at this so thank you all right events august 15th and i know you're just going to barely hear about this when this show gets on the air but we are having a chamber mixer at the art center uh, from six to eight, it's open to all chamber members, businesses, anyone in the community that are interested in making Cannon County a great place to live and helping promote it. You're welcome to come to this. You're welcome to see the new businesses that are coming to town, some of the old businesses that have changed. Um, it's just a mixer, that's what it is. It's free. There will be finger foods, 
and you will have an opportunity to introduce yourself and what company you're with or what your interest is uh, because we do give 60 second commercials. <laughs> so you're welcome to come to that. And um, if you work or live here or do business here, please come to the Chamber Mixer because um, it's a good way to meet your neighbor. And of course, you need to RSVP to the Chamber as soon as you can if you plan on coming because we do have to provide uh, food for this. And that will be on August 15th from 6 to 8 at the Art Center. And August 19th will be our second merchants meeting of this year. And we uh, encourage all merchants to attend this. It will be at City Hall beginning at 6 p.m. And that's on a Monday night so that we didn't interfere with a budget meeting or a ball game or because school has started, so you have to take all of that into consideration. But the purpose of this meeting is to plan the events for our Cannon Country Christmas, which is always held uh, the week before Thanksgiving. Friday night is the big night, and we want to include Saturday and have some things that will be there that people would enjoy on Saturday. But Friday night's a big night, and all of the merchants prosper from this so they need to come to these meetings and of course we always want their input as to what we can do to make this a special event and we have a lot of visitors from out of the county that come to this so we want to be able to publicize it early on so people will know about it so um that's on august 19th at city hall now our county Cannon Country Christmas is November 23rd and 20, or 22nd, 23rd, 23rd is that? Right, yeah. and Friday night, there are, the merchants are open all day on Friday, but usually things get started about five o'clock because that's when Santa comes in, and there will be pictures with Santa and some other things that are in the making right now, so I won't spoil them, but uh, people that have been before kind of know, and people that haven't, you'll have a good time. Plus the merchants go all out. They have refreshments, they uh, have door prizes, they have special sales. So yeah, it's a fun time for everyone. And you probably know about this, Keith, the Cannon County Lions football begins Friday, August 23rd. 23rd, yeah, yeah. Got to be on Friday. So is that a home game or away game? It is game? an away game. We will be playing at White County High School. Okay. White County is a little bit bigger of a school, but we kept up with them during a scrimmage last year. And as a result, they wanted to schedule White County as a football opponent. They also scheduled the next week on the 30th will be the first home game. They will be playing Warren County High School out of McMinnville. So we kind of looked at DeKalb County's schedule and said, you know, DeKalb County's got a little rivalry going for Warren. Why don't we have one? So, Well, DeKalb going? and Cannon's always had yeah, a rivalry. Wow. That's a big rivalry, too. Border wars. You know, wars. somehow, I want to say years back when I first moved here, there was a bell or something that they would haul back and forth. Was it a bell or a horn? I don't know. What? Was it was kind of like what uh, Macon in Portland used but to have. But they would come kidnap it and take it back out there, and then we'd have to come kidnap get it, it back. back yeah. <laughs> train know, train horn, happened. train whistle. That's what it was. Train whistle. Yeah. I had a train horn. Where you okay. Yeah. I'll take your word for it. I haven't seen it in a few years, but. Yeah, it probably ended up in Macon <clears throat> County. Probably that's where it ended up because Macon in Portland used to do the same thing and there was a big brouhaha few years ago where a kid uh, from Macon County that was a coach and one of you know kids from coaches sons or something like that he ended up going to Smith County for some reason and he took and the he bed. took the he took the horn <laughs> with him Macon County was uh, blaming Portland for stealing it yeah it was a big I think that was the whole purpose of that was who could steal it and yeah. get away with it so that you know 
that they probably stopped that because this day and age it may be a little bit more serious than it was then. <laughs> So yeah, they don't the do that anymore. front page of the anymore. newspaper in a bad way, right? <clears throat> right. And also we have another cruise in, and that will be on August 24th on Saturday. It's from 4 to 7. And don't forget the Color of Fall Car and Truck Show, which will be happening September 28th. And we do have a rain date for that event because last year we had to use the rain date, and that will be October Fifth, I hate having to use the rain date, yeah. but last year it turned out well. The weather was beautiful, but what happens when you have to do that is you run in to someone else's uh, car show or cruise ends because there's one somewhere every weekend, so we don't want to have to do that. And of course, our last cruise in will be October 12th. That will be our toy drive cruise in. So we ask all the cruisers to bring a toy and it will be given to uh, local children at Christmas time. Uh, that's always, people have always donated very much to this, so we like that. And um, also on that, oh, last month's cruise in, we had a big crowd, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes, More we did. than I expected well, i guess june june's cruise in and we got threatened by rain so not a whole lot came out in right. may we had a decent turnout and april did but in july we we got the word out people well it was good because we had a lot of people that came to it and one thing i want to um kind of talk about one of the things with the cruise in is we have dtc of course has been our sponsor for the cruise ends this year. And they give out t-shirts and caps and you get to register for a TV that they're giving away at the Color of Fall Car and Truck Show. We also give out Moonlight Drive-In movie tickets when you register your vehicle, along with you get to sign up for door prizes. That usually O'Reilly donates most of those. O'Reilly's Auto Parts. But one thing I've run into is these giveaways are for people who participate in the cruise ends. In other words, you've got to bring your vehicle and register it. I've run into the spectators. problem that spectators just come up there and want a t-shirt or a cap or they want drive-in movie tickets. Well, I can't abuse that privilege because Moonlight donates these to the to the cruise in and it is for the participants of the cruise in we're not trying to be cruel but that's just the way it is because we had one person that i think maybe someone in her family did have a car but she went and called the rest of her family <laughs> and told them to come get free drive-in tickets <laughs> and i i can't do that you know we had all these little kids coming up and i thought you have a car here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I brought my little tight four-wheeler. Yeah, you know. so that, that's one of the things for those, and we do appreciate our sponsors, and we don't want to abuse those gifts that they give. And then August 31st and September 1st and 2nd, the Cannon County Walking Horse Association will hold their Labor Day horse ride, and, of course, they leave the fairgrounds on Saturday at 11 o'clock, right up to the campgrounds on Short Mountain, and they have a full weekend of horseback riding and horse shows and this type of thing. So um, if you want to be uh, a part of that, you can always go on their website or show up. I, now, they do sell memberships for this. so. Um, you can always call me and I'll tell you where you can get a membership for that ahead of time. And that's always the Labor Day one. Of course, September 14th and 15th will be the White Oak Craft Fair here at the Art Center. And also many of the other businesses in town take advantage of that also. And so you might shop the flea market and the antique stores around the square and the boutiques could be a part of that. And that, and I want to tell you, if you want, there's something going on at the distillery every weekend. They have music 
on Thursdays for right now. They have tours and um, they have a great restaurant, but they also have music. They have uh, disc golf festivals and music festivals. So go on their website and see what all they have coming up. You'll also find a lot of them on the Chamber website also. And you have some information, Keith, about tourism, right? Well, this was just released uh, here recently as of yesterday, I guess, being August the 8th, 7th that we're taping this, August 6th. This was uh, state released uh, some numbers based on tourism development, and it looks like that the uh, state of Tennessee, all 95 counties saw an increase in economic impact with each having more than $1 million in direct travel expenditures. So tourism is on the upswing. And uh, for instance, Putnam County, uh, that's where this particular story originated, uh, it resulted in $140 million of tourism dollars came into Putnam County during the 2017-18 year. Now, uh, this particular thing that I'm fixing to share with you is not, uh, has, is not recent. Uh, this was a study that was done. They, in fact, uh, the snapshots of the individual counties uh, they're coming out with a new one in September, so we'll have some more information for you maybe in October about this. But uh, for those of you that do not believe that uh, tourism dollars has an impact on county taxes, property tax, county revenue, uh, each household from 2017 pays $55.64 less in local county taxes. When you consider you've got 14,000 county residents, and of those 14,000 county residents, give or take 5,000 homes here in Cannon County, you know that's that's some major money, almost $255,000 brought into the county. Now, according to the original study that was done, uh, well, actually, according to this study, Cannon County was ranked num number 91 out of 95 counties, and they're bringing in $255,000 of tourism dollars. And they're still ranked 91 out of 95. That's some that's some good stuff. You know, if you if you just look at it like this, <clears throat> everybody that comes into Cannon County for any event, I don't care if, what it is, they spend money somewhere. It, not always at the same place. A lot of them spend it at our convenience markets. They buy gas. Uh, they stop at our com our food stores. Uh, they can spend it a lot of different places, but all of that money is tourism money. When people come through here and spend money in our county, that's considered tourism. So we have a lot of events that go on. The horse show, uh, the Lions Club horse show brought in a lot of people. Now they spent money somewhere. They may not have went downtown and shopped, but somewhere they spent money. The people that come into the drive-in, the drive-in pays taxes, just like everyone else does, you know. So that all goes into that pot too. So you have to, you have to look at it like every sports event, everything. And we're about to run out of time, and we do appreciate you watching us, and we hope you'll watch us again next month. And we will see you next month, right? Uh, we'll try to come up with some more comical things to talk about, won't we? Well, I, I could come up with some, but we probably couldn't talk about them. So. Y'all have a good month. <laughs>